The init containers are specialized containers that run before application containers. They can contain the utilities or setup scripts not present in an application image. And using these containers, you can have a generic application image and an init container image with the setup tool, which behavior depends on the command arguments you give. So this way, for example, you can have a generic image from your application and you can customize everything with an init container for different customers. So it saves you a lot of time and you can have more generic images. The init containers are also good for checking some requirements. So you can check for some requirements before starting an image, like whether a service is available or not, and wait it for a while to start or terminate the pod. One pod can have one or more init containers. If it has more than one init container, then they will be executed in the sequential order. The sequence depends on the order given in the YAML file. If the init container or init containers don't succeed, then your application container will not start. Let's see some examples. You have an example YAML file called pod nginx with init.yaml. Open that file and let's see what's inside. So it starts like a normal pod definition. API version, version 1, kind is a pod, same on metadata and so on. And you specify the init containers in the specification of the pod. Older versions of Kubernetes defined the init containers in the metadata with annotations. From version 1.8, it's mandatory to specify an init container in the specification. So an init container is on the same level as a container or a volume. So let's see this example. We have an Nginx container. It listens on the port 80 and it will mount a volume called HTML dir and the mount pass will be user share Nginx HTML. Right now you don't know anything about volumes but we will cover the volumes later. What you have to know right now, that they specify that this volume, this directory, will be mounted in the mount pass. And this mount pass is where Nginx looks for the default index.html. So we can customize our Nginx a bit. We have an init container, only one. But you see, it says init containers. So the specification tells you that you can have more than one. So we will give a name install to this init container. We will use the busybox image. And we will have the wget command. And we will issue the wget command with the argument dash o work dear index html and get it from http www.academy.com We will issue the command wget and we will download the default web page from www.academy.com and save it under the work dir index.html Right now you still don't know anything about the volumes but you see that we have this volume called html dir so you still don't know anything about the volumes, but you see, we mount the same HTML dir volume, but under a different mount path, work dir. So this container will behave just like in a normal container that it will create the slash work dir directory dynamically. And when we issue the wget command and download the index.html into this work dir directory it will be put into the html dir volume and as the nginx container mounts this html dir they share the same volume as you know the containers inside a pod can share a volume and it will mount it under user share nginx html the index.html will be replaced with the www.dacademy.com web page. So let's see how it works. 
create the pod with kubectl create dash f pod nginx with init.yaml. It's created and let's see what's happening. As you can see, it starts to initializing and you see it's in the init phase and 0 slash 1 is here. So it means it started the init container but it's not succeeded, not finished yet. Issue the command again and as you can see this pod is running right now. So let's see what happened. Issue the command kubectl describe pod init demo pipe it to less and as you can see it has an init container which uses the busybox image and you can see the command and the arguments issued and its status it's terminated and the reason for that because it's completed so that's why we have a running container based on nginx okay so the status is running and as you can see it mounts the HTML dir volume and map it to the user share nginx HTML okay let's see the IP address of that pod you will have a different IP address but you can look for the IP and the IP of that pod just take a note about this IP and issue the following command CURL and the IP of the pod. As you can see, there's a lots of things here. Even if it's only in a console, you can see this is not the default nginx1. And you can see we have reference to dacademy.com. So we just downloaded the start page of dacademy.com with the init container and we just replaced the default nginx index.html file. So this way you can demonstrate that you can do anything with an init container. Let's see what happens if we generate a bug and the init container is not able to complete and succeed. So clear the screen and first delete the pod init demo. You have to wait for a while until it's really deleted because if you just list all the pods, you can see it's still terminating. So we have to wait until it's terminated to be able to start it again. So list the pods again. And as there is no init demo pod anymore, just clear the screen again and open the YAML file. The pod nginx with init.yaml. And just make a mistake. For example, remove the Y from the URL Academy. There will be no such web page, so it will not be able to download the web page, so it will not be able to succeed. Okay, just close the file and exit. Okay, and let's create the pod again. Okay, just issue this command kubectl create dash f pod nginx with init yaml and right now we will have an error just make sure we see that show the command kubectl get pod and as you can see right now we have an error let's try describe this pod kubectl describe pod init demo and as you can see it sets up the volume pulling the image create a container and it says backup for starting failed container so it will just constantly restarting you can see that the init is in a crash loop back of state and it's restarted two times already okay so this is what happens if it's not able to succeed because if you roll back the console you can see that the init container state is terminated because there's an error and of course we know the error in real life you have to take a look into the logs 
and YAML definition to identify the problems so you can solve them. So right now just delete this pod kubectl delete pod init demo. Okay, let's clear the screen and see another example. What happens if you have more than one pod and what you can use the pods, not just executing some scripts, but also, as I mentioned, to wait for some services to come up. So you have a YAML definition file. So open the YAML definition file with this example called pod with two containers dot yaml as you can see we have one container called my app busybox and it just issues a command the echo command that app is running and it will run for one hour then exit of course this is just a simple example but it demonstrates that you can wait for other services or pods even to come up Right now, we will take a look into the example waiting for some services. So we have two init containers, the wait for my service and the wait for my DB. And they just issue the command NS lookup my service and NS lookup my DB. And they will run until they don't find it in the cube DNS records. Because NSLOOKUP, as you know, resolves a name and it will resolve the MyService and the MyDB. And until we don't have these two services registered in the kubeDNS, it will not start our main container. So just imagine that you have an application which depends on a database connection or another service, just like this will be your front end and the middleware or the backend service and the database service are called my service and my db so we will wait for them okay just close this yaml file and start the pod with kubectl create dash f pod with two containers dot yaml as you can see it's created because we call the pod my app and just let's list the pods kubectl get pod and as you can see right now we have two init containers and zero has been finished why because they are still waiting for services we will learn more about services later but right now we have a definition file in services.yaml so just let's take a look at this and these are just simple service definitions without attaching any real pods or deployments behind them. The purpose of this definition file and this service definitions, the my service and the DB, my DB service to provide it to the init containers. So we can mimic that we have two running services with some real work in the background and it will allow our application container to start. Okay, so right now just say kubectl create dash f services.yaml. And as you can see, we have two services created the my service and the my db. And as you know, the two init containers are waiting for these services. So let's see what changed kubectl get pod. And as you can see, right now it's running. Why? because the init containers are succeeded. So if you just open the definition file again, pod with two init containers .yaml, you can see we have been waited for my service and my DB and they are succeeded. So this is an example how to define more than one init container. So you can suffice another requirements on the status of other services and pods or deployments. So close this file and clean up your Kubernetes cluster right now. kubectl get svc and as you see you have mydb and my service. We will talk about them later. Right now just delete these with a command kubectl delete svc mydb 
and kubectl lift svc my service. After the pods are started, these requirements are not checked again. So just keep in mind that if the requirements are vanished in the Kubernetes, it will not affect the pod. You have to resolve it with another methods to start or restart them. Because if you just list the pods, you see my app is still running because the requirements are only checked during the initialization. So continue with the cleanup and delete this pod as well. as well.